Hello and welcome to Tracy Momi Reads. I'm back again with another book review. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Stranger in the Lifeboat by Mitch Album. Stranger in the Lifeboat by Mitch Album. This is probably my like maybe fifth book that I've read by Mitch Album. I absolutely love his stories. And one of the reasons why is because they're all similar in that they explore the idea of faith and humanity, but it's not like preachy or beating you over the head with, you know, some of the philosophical themes that run through the books uh, as it pertains to, you know, religion, the afterlife and things like that. There's always still a story there that has you turn the pages and that you're anxious to uh, see how things turn out. And Stranger, The Stranger in the Lifeboat was no exception. And another thing about his books, there's always this, like you have two, two types of things. You always have this say what moment where you're like, wait a minute, this whole time, this is what was happening. And you also have like an aha moment where maybe something in the story kind of touches close to home and maybe it's something that you were thinking about and the um, the way that he talks about it in his books gives you another perspective or uh, alternate way to, to deal with something. So I love that about his books as well. It's like, even though they're fiction books, except for um, Tuesdays with Maury, that was based on a, a real thing, but a real story, a true story. But the, the majority of his books are fiction books and, but they still have like this, element of like inspiration and encouragement like that you would find typically in like non-fiction type books so this particular this particular story um is about a guy who is working on a big uh yacht that belongs to like one of the richest men in the world so when I'm talking yacht, I'm, I'm think cruise liner from the way that uh, the author described it in his book. He's working on this this big yacht, this ship, and it is a uh, gathering of some of the some of the wealthiest people in the world, and they're out there brainstorming and and you know having this big meeting, and there is some type of explosion or malfunction, if you will, that causes the boat to sink, okay? So um, there ends up being 10 people, maybe, seven? I cannot even remember how many people, but it was like under 10, right? Um, people that were, that all kind of like found each other, like floating in the waters after, you know, the boat like uh, capsizes. And they're like um, hanging off of dear life and they're inside this lifeboat that came off of the ship, right? And so they are, uh, and one of the people happens to be the guy who owned the yacht, who called the big meeting and everything. You have a couple of people that worked with the main character in the book and, um, you know, they were like ship hands or I think a cook and his wife. Um, there was a little girl and then the other people were all like um, guests uh, on the yacht that were also rich or well-known or famous or infamous or something like that. So they're all now in this boat and they come across someone who, uh, and this isn't a spoiler because it's in the, the blurb, but they come across a man floating in the water and they've been out there, I want to say for either hours or days. And this man, they come across him in the water and he like doesn't have a scratch on him. And they, you know, pull him up into the boat with them, the uh, lifeboat. And he tells them that he's God. So that's kind of where things kind of take off uh, from there um, on, the, on the lifeboat. Because there's also another story going on on land where, fast forward, this police uh, detective has, uh, a man has come and told him, hey, I found a lifeboat on this um, island, you know, here on our island that came ashore. So he goes out and he finds this journal 
because in the main story, the main character has been like kind of writing to his wife everything that's going on and detailing what's happening on the on the boat. And so, you know, future take, instead of a flashback, it's like a future take. Uh, the police officer has found it. So he's kind of like reading the story now and giving us an account of what took place on the boat. And as you can imagine, if you're like lost at sea, um, th there's just like so much going on and your faith and your will is tested to the max. Uh, and it seems like, you know, Fortunately, everyone that's on the lifeboat kind of has, um, I would say like a, a skill, if you will, that's kind of helping them to stay alive. But, you know, they know that their, their days are numbered. And uh, sure enough, one by one, they start to succumb, you know, to the sea, to uh, injuries, to uh, mania to just a variety of things until there ends up being just one and things just get really interesting. I mean, it's really hard to talk about this book without really wanting to just, just give you everything. But the end is mind blowing. Like when you figure out everything that was going on, like what really happened to the boat. Um, and, there's like a suspect on land in this future take. And then we learn what really happened through the journaling of the, the main character. I mean, it's, I think the book, cause I saw it in Target and I may actually end up getting a physical copy because I rented this one or loan, got it on loan from the library, like uh, through the Libby app, my favorite. And, uh, but I think I want to have my own copy. It's, I think it's only like 267 pages. So again, another book that I devoured pretty quickly, like within 24, 36 hours, because I had some other stuff going on, but it totally keeps you engaged and interested. And I know I got mixed reviews, but I don't think people got it. Like if you're not a fan of Mitch Album, or if you haven't read any of his other books, this, I don't know that this is a good one to start with because um, I don't think you understand that this is what he does. This is the type of writing that you get. So maybe the first um, five people, I think it's the first five people you meet in heaven, maybe a better book to start off with if you haven't ever read any of his books or maybe The Timekeeper, maybe another one that's good uh, because this is classic Mitch album um, this, this story and, um, all the elements that are running through it. Classic. I will say this about the book. It was very reminiscent to me and it could just be the fact that a boat and water was, was involved. Um, but I was thinking about the life of Pi during this book when I was reading it. Um, and, and everything that took place on the boat with the with the tiger and all of that. So I, I feel like it's similar in that vein. But other than that, that's probably where I, I, I stop the comparisons because the the way that each story the way that each story starts off is totally different. It's just um, one of those books that it just really makes you think. You know, not only about what you would potentially do in such a situation if you were, you know, suddenly found yourself floating in the ocean, you know, like would your faith uh, be strong enough to kind of tough it out until you're potentially rescued? Um, would you start to have conversations with God? Would you maybe even see God? Uh, so, yeah, there's just so much going through this book. It's very um, inspirational, very um, encouraging. And it's just like a feel good book. I mean, all of his books have that element where even if it's not an ending you were expecting, it's the ending that needs to happen to uh, bring everything full circle and to kind of show what's possible right so yeah the stranger in the lifeboat by mitch album very good read 
I had one book this year that I said I gave five stars, and that was The Revival of Opal and Nev. And, I mean, this one is close. I mean, I, I would give it, the story is just so short. And, like, there, there was just one part I was kind of like, oh, really? That, is that what happened? Um, but, really, like, maybe four and a half? It's a four and a half star read out of five for sure. If you're interested in stories that have a bit of a faith element, um, something inspirational, but again, it's not something that's just hitting you over the head with lesson after lesson or condemnation after condemnation. Or if you're just a, you know, write out Mitch album fan, then I think you will really, really enjoy The Stranger in the Lifeboat. And again, I got this from the Libby app, which is a library app. You know, if you are if you have a library card and your um, library that you frequent is um, connected, you know, or, or part of that system, then you can check out books for free. You know, that's that's a great way to, you know, if you if you're like uh, like me, someone who doesn't necessarily have a list that I follow religiously, even though I have books back here that I haven't read, but. You know, I read according to my mood. I read according to time. You know, I read um, a lot of just different things um, go into determining what I want to read. And I feel like if I, I have like a loose list, obviously these are books that at some point I want to read, but I don't lock myself into keeping a specific, okay, in March, I'm going to read blah, 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 in April, blah, you know, because I may not be in the mood to read those books. Maybe they're too long. Maybe they're too heavy. Maybe they're too short. Maybe I need something serious. Maybe I want something funny. So I just read books based on that, you know. So anyway, I'm getting all off topic here. Thank you so much for watching. And um, if you have read Stranger in the Lifeboat, I'd love to know what you thought about it and about that ending. So if you leave a comment and it's a spoiler, make, make sure that you highlight that it is a spoiler for anyone that may be perusing the comments. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much to everyone who has already subscribed. I sincerely appreciate it. You guys have a great weekend and I'll be back next week. See you later.